With the release of Gengar EX, it did pretty well, but fell short pretty quickly. But uh, there's been a new card that might make it a little bit better. The Handheld Fan. So what does the fan do? Well, it reads, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot and is damaged by an attack, move an energy from the attacking Pokemon to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Combining that with Gengar's attack effect where you can move an energy from the active to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, in a turn of them hitting you and you hitting back, you have moved two energy off of the active. Meaning with this Gengar EX deck, you are far quicker in moving all the energy onto a useless Pokemon and effectively just making them unable to play. And that is the premise of the deck, but just times two now. And I'm gonna be playing it in a Pidgeot engine with a 1-1 bit barrel line channeling my inner Tord. At least that's why I tell myself at night to stop the misplays from keeping me up. But regardless of my insecurities, let's play with the Gengar. And a quick shout out to our sponsors, PPCGL Store, where you can buy codes to bling out your decks using code FDW for 5% off and what's not. So you can buy and sell collectible Pokemon cards live. And they're even giving you £10 off your first purchase using my special link. Links to all sponsors are in the description below, but for now, let's get going. Don't like going second here, especially what looks to be a against the Char a Charizard, but Charizard is actually pretty good, right? Because Charizard does kind of rely on an accelerating engine's play and then recovering energy to accelerate more, yada, yada, yada. But if you just move the energy to something useless, then it does tend to struggle. Nonetheless, they've had a terrible start. So we're going to go for an Arvin, grab ourselves a Poffin, and I'm tempted to Evolution, you know. Yeah, I think I will. I think the, 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 the hand, sorry, my opponent's board state allows for this. Ah, uh, but then again, that does mean that I can't attach for turn. So actually, I'm going to change my mind on that. And instead, I'm going to attach the Ghastly and then just go for a Forest Seal Stone and an Instant Charge. Yeah, I don't think I will either. I'll just use that as discard fodder instead. That's fine. Yeah, I got to, I, I got to not, sorry, got to remember. I got to forget. I got to not forget. I've got to remember that we aren't playing Zard. We need to attach for turn. So we got to be careful there. Nonetheless, they get rid of a Charmeleon and a Counter Catcher to grab themselves a Rotom. So they need to do something for sure. And I'm happy with this because we haven't got the best of hands either. So listen, mate, you do your thing, man. I think they have to V-Star though for a Poffin, right? Yeah, you need to get Charmander down. Me, on the other hand, I already have Gengar. This is really nice. But again, Arvid, actually, that makes more sense, of course. Can get you a Defiance Band in return. Meaning the Rotom will likely go down eventually. We do have race to get rid of it, of course. That might be the reality. They vacuum. No, I shouldn't have attached that stone. I was hoping they didn't have that. But it's not the end still. It is fine. So I know for a fact I'm attacking this turn, right? So I know I'm attaching an energy. And I think I Ultra Ball. I don't think I actually get Pidgeot here. I think I get Gengar. Because I want to get Gengar down and Arvin for a switch instead. Actually, let me see what tool cards I have. I forgot what I'm playing. Oh, I could Prime Catch that. Oh, yeah. Prime Catch would be really good, actually. Maybe I get Arvin for a Prime Catch instead of a switch. And then just hit into the Charmander. Or do I target the Pidgeot? That's an interesting one. One. I think I target the Pidgeot, actually. Yeah, that makes more sense. So I'm going to Buddy Poffin then for a Ghastly and another Pidgey. Would have been nice to have Bidoof there because I think we're going to lean more into the Bidoof side as it stands. But we'll just Arvin, get Prime Catch and Fan out. Rare Candy into Gengar. Go for a Prime Catch into the Pidgey and then take it out. I think going for their consistency now might be better considering they're already struggling. And on top of that, oh, we're on mute again. Lovely stuff. There we go. Back to normal. And on top of that, um, what was I saying? Get the, get the consistency. Yeah, if the Zard hits us, the energy goes away anyway because of our fan and of course we can still tricky steps it so i think that seems about right to me a bit risky though right because you technically could argue that you go for the charmander because they can't attack me this turn as a result. But I wanted to just get the Pidgey while I can. There's a Badoo. And they nest ball. And you have to get Charmander, right? Yep, there we go. And they just instant charge. Oof, rough. Especially that I'm going to Iono you. <laughs> That's it. I'll probably Iono them for something they actually want. I also dump my throwing Ghastly down here. We do have the, the Gengar that allows us to switch. So we are stall safe. Um, and also, it's quite nice to have that as well. Um, ew, not the best hand, all things considered. But I'll just go for a tricky steps here then. Take out that Charmander. That makes things a little bit easier for us. Evening out that prize trade. We'd love rare candy and that's exactly what we get what is it in recent videos of me wanting something and getting it like do you remember the tina video i asked for arvin twice and got it twice yeah uh, now it's thrice it is to charge again no way they're bricking so much and i love it because even if they start evolving it's going to be some tricky steps action absolutely diabolical i'm telling you right let's just pidgey up then and i think it's time for a haunter so let's throw that bad boy in like so in case we get tmd evolved you never know and we'll just go for a tricky steps there it's not looking good brevet it ain't looking so great there's badoof i like that they do get an energy on charmander and they wait oh, i was about to say i was like wait they gnawing curse that's not an attack name no our gnawing curse comes in and that's super important because we only hit 160 charizard is 330 so we need that 20 damage ping 
to two hit KO the Zard. Now, it would be smart for Zard to accelerate all energy to itself, but that's still a lot of energy being moved with the fan. So they have to play around it, but it's still not great. They do puff in for a Pidgey, though, and a rare candy Zard is finally out, and they are able to start swinging, only getting the one energy there. I guess that makes sense. The way to play around the Gengar is just to not accelerate too much energy into play. And every time you do get Charizard... Whoa, okay. Every time you do get Charizard out, Oh, wait, they have the rare candy? Wait, why did they get Pidgeot like they had rare candy there? That was strange. Anyway, let's move energy to a Rotom. Because of that lovely fan, we've topped like an Arvin. I am going to get myself a Gengar EX. I think. I think we're just going to go for that. I was tempted to get Arvin for rare candy and get the other Gengar out. But for now, I'm going to get rid of probably the Cleffa and then just keep attaching for now. And what can I Arvin for here? Maybe I do preemptively Arvin for rare candy. Could get a Dark Patch, but that's not needed right now. Yeah, I just preemptively get rare candy, I think. The hand doesn't indicate they're going to be Ionoing anytime soon. So let's just go for the tricky steps. And now there's a Charizard in the active with literally no energy on it. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> All that roads on, baby. Oh God, if only you use fire energy to attack, eh? Shame on you, mate. Or shame for you, should I say. Rare candy, they finally get Pidgeot, but oh God, well, I guess they go for Turo. Is that what you do? Do you Turo here? Well, they grab something. Let's see what it is. It's an Iono to three. Okay. Oh, maybe they did have Pidgeot, but they benched Pidgey that turn. That would make more sense, huh? Yeah, that would. They do get another Charizard, but if they don't have to pivot, they're going to have to use this Zard, meaning I'm going to move the energy off it completely. Yeah. Oh my God. Now bear in mind when I KO it, I can still choose to move the energy. And if I KO it, I don't want to put energy in this card pile because of course that is something they can rod back even though there is two here anyway. It's still just better to move the energy onto something useless like a Rotom. Yes, it gives Rotom pivot, but they already have that with Pidgeot. It's completely useless. This Rotom's going to have all the energy. <laughs> and I simply need to get a rare candy to evolve into this Gengar because I need to keep the uh, the flow going here. And that'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to win the game next time with boss as a result. Uh, let's puff in as well. You get Bidoof down. That Ultra Ball will do me a solid. And we're just going to quick search for, I think I go for an Arvin here because I can get something. No, 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 I'll keep the Arvin, right? I think I just get, grab rare candy here. Yeah, I just grab Red candy. All right, let's do that. And we'll evolve into Gengar. Take the knockout with tricky steps. And that energy is not going into the discard pile, my friend. That's going onto the road. <laughs> Donnie's got four fire energy. This is so cool. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Two prize cards there. Another fan. Now, what they need to do here is boss up my Pidgeot for a KO. But all they have, considering the energy, uh, I'm assuming not much. Is it just Zard and Pass? Wait, why are you canceling Cologne? I guess that's just they're just playing that way. Oh my god, really? That's all you've got? Yeah, mental. They had to evolve into that Zard to then to the previous one. And at that point, they now don't have a charm mana to evolve into Zard because of that. Meaning they can't go for Burning Darkness this turn. So all we need is a, a boss's orders. They failed canceling Cologne there. And they Iono us. Ain't gonna matter if I have that Pidgeot. We did get an Arvin from it, but that doesn't really matter. Well, that's it. I could get Ultra Ball top deck and uh, not really. Doesn't really work. They get three Charmander out. They're hoping for a comeback. But my friend, you are on full Hopium. Instant charge. And that is going to be game for us as long as we have a boss in deck. Which we should. We pretty much should. I haven't used one this game, have I? I don't think we have yet. Yeah, there's the boss. And we had Charizard EX for dinner, mate. On an app absolute plate. And we dined. We fine dined. Wonderful game there. Lads, we have a bad matchup in Serena with Brute Bonnet. It's bad because they don't hit us. They put damage counters on us, meaning the ability of the fan doesn't come into play. That said, I can still move the energy with its uh, tricky steps. So there is that. Um, right. Also, starting road to many active never feels great, does it? Let me check my deck quickly. We obviously want to get a Ghastly, but do I want Bidoof or Pidgeot? Um, we can do Bibarel. And the hand kind of calls for more of a Pidgeot play, I think. I don't know, bro. I'm just winging it. Let's go for an instant charge and see what we get. We get another Pidgey. <laughs> okay. At least we got an Iona for the next turn. There's an Arvin. Bro, it's so hot. You can see my sweat. It is like 30 degrees here in the UK. We had a heat wave. It's the last day of the heat wave. Max at 29 degrees today. I know for a lot of you lot in the States and all that, it's nothing. But for me, mate, I just literally last week, it was like 15 degrees. Imagine going up 12 degrees in like a day. It's it's just, you, you, the body can't handle it, all right? Oh, an Arvin. Okay, that has just opened everything up. Oh, this is so good, bro. This is just, this is like actually cracked, like legit, bro. Okay, let's go for an Arvin. Rare candy and the stone. We prize the stone. Oh, no, that's not good. Right, change of plan. We're going to go for a TM Evo. <laughs> uh, yeah, seems like a TM Evo to me. So I... Do I want to TM Evo with Rotom? That doesn't feel great. No, I need to TM Evo with Ghastly, right? I need to attach the Bench Ghastly and then TM Evo, yeah. Which means I need a Switch card instead. Yeah, I'm going to go for a Switch card instead of a Poffin. I don't want a Prime. That just doesn't feel good. It does mean I'm only TM Evoing onto just the Ghastly, but it's better than nothing. We've been kind of shafted there, unfortunately. If only I played Pidgeotto, eh? <laughs> uh, all right, let's just do the Ghastly. No Pidgeot, of course, but we 
do get the Haunter. And that means we do have a Gengar next turn, at least. All right. Can I go into this Gengar, which I'm debating. I mean, what if they try and trap me and stuff? Then it might be worth just attacking with this Gengar. Oh, they do attach to Bin Sweet and get Bit Barrel and Iona me anyway. Okay. Maybe that wasn't the play. Maybe I should have just gone for an instant charge instead and had a better board state. But we do have Pidgeot here, so that's just going to guarantee it, right? Almost. We do need to get a Gengar. Oh, no, we have Gengar here. Yeah. Okay. This guarantees an attack, basically. Okay. That's fine. That's better than nothing. And it looks like they might be just going for an instant charge here to try and set up. There's a Sneasler and the instant charge. Interesting they're not playing it with like Frostlass or Monkey Dory. That seems to be better now than Brute Bonnet. Oh, I like the energy. That's really, whoa, that's actually like really important. Okay, let's go for it. Arvin, Rare Candy. And this time I think I'm going to delete the board. Yeah, with that Ultra Ball. I'm going to Ultra Ball away. I need to attach for turn. Wait, hold on. Okay, let's do this quickly. Let's Pidgeot. Then I Pidgeot. Oh, no, I've got a better idea. What if I just get Gengar now without Rare Candy? And then just like board retreat this Ghastly. That lets me, yeah, that's so much better. Okay, it means I don't have the fan though. Oh, no, it does. Okay, yeah, this is definitely to play. All right, I just grabbed Gengar. Maybe I should have done that with Ultra Ball. But then, no, no, no. It allows me to keep these cards that I want to keep. Yeah, because I can do this. Then I go for the board. The hand here. Board here. Then then I can nest ball for a Bidoof and Bob's your uncle. There we go. I think that was much better, actually. We get the KO as well, which is nice. Now they could literally want to KO me next turn. Let's, let's take that into account. Oh, wait. Why did I think I was hitting it for weakness? No, it's weak to grass, not dark, you donut. Yeah, they could want to KO me here. Literally. That would suck. Oh my god. We might be getting one it KO'd. Uh oh. There's a lost city. Please tell me you ain't got it. Toxic powder. There you go. There's the three. And it's Atticus. Okay. Okay. No switch cards, please. No switches. There's a boon sweet. If they whiff it, that's a huge misplay, by the way. And you'll see why. Oh my god, that is massive. Okay, here is exactly why that is a ridiculous misplay. The one card they should never, never have put down is... I'll show you in a second as I play my turn. <laughs> Let's get rid of these two. Uh, maybe I wanted that puff in, but I just want to get another Gengar out quickly to be safe, even though I don't need to. And a lot of you might think, hey, Sean, just go for the Iono, you know, disrupt the hand. It ain't going to be a problem. Oh, bro, they put one card into play that has ruined their whole, their whole day. They put Lost City down, which means I can bring up the Sneasler and KO it, and they never get it again. Meaning the poison only does 10 damage instead of 30, meaning Icicle Soul no longer one it KOs anything in my deck. That is massive. And we get a stone for the prize cards, even better. Yep, yeah, they scoop. See, bro, that's what it takes. One little misplay, as you see with me every day, and your whole deck can fall apart. It's crazy, man. Oh, we have an Ogre Pond in the active. This means it's likely Raging Bolt, which is not a good match. But we'll play it through. They go for a Teal Mask. He'll dance. Sorry, they get another Ogre Pond. And another Ogre Pond. And they nest ball. Let me guess, another Ogre Pond. Oh, hello. We're playing Sinister. All right. Hey, listen, bro. It's unique. It's different. It's right up my alley. So I think what I go for here, I'm going to try a different strategy to what I've usually been doing, okay? I'm going to go for a Clefa because I can off in here for a, another Poffin and a board, right? I don't want the board though. Maybe I'll just go for, no, I have to board it. Okay, that's fine because I want to put the fan on the Gengar. That's the whole point of the video, right? But it does make more sense for me to just, because I need, I still need the energy attachments for turn, so I have to board. Um, There you go. That, that It is what it is, isn't it? And I'll just retreat here. Um, I'm tempted to collapse Stadium, but I want to save that for a potential Rotom. Let's just gasp, gasp draw him and see what we get. There's the Rotom speaking of. And our Dark Patch. I think I only played the one copy or two copy of Dark Patch. I played a high account, but I realized I only played it in certain situations where I really needed it. And when you have Pidgeot to like find any cards you want. Oh, I dropped my fidget. Um, then you can just use that, right? And then just find it through that route. So it's perfectly fine. I think that's kind of cool. Ah, of course, I own no. So again, this is still relatively... Mm, hello. I just would like a rare candy and that would be really nice. Still relatively a bad matchup because they are discarding energy, right? All they got to do is discard the energy and spill the tea being one energy attack cost. Again, not really <laughs> that uh, good for us, you know, because they just attach an energy the next turn and go for a couple of teal dances. And next thing you know, they're hitting 210 again. A little bit scary, mind you. Uh, uh, for me personally, I think it's PDCGL going, hey, you've had a bit too much fun. You've rattled a Zard. You've absolutely demolished this arena. Now you've got to have something that beats you easily. I see you, devs. I see right through you. Oh, they go for a curse drop? That's actually like low-key smart, no? Because then it puts pressure on me to evolve them. Um, it's a shame because I'm just going to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the top deck of the rare candy is beautiful. Oh, this deck just works, man. It really just works. This is three games in a row, by the way. I'm not playing about. I haven't picked any games like that. Straight three games on the trot, and we just keep getting it. It feels like Charizard, which kind of makes sense based on this deck, because uh, it just always finds a way. Well, there's Iono, and we get the energy. And not only that, we even get a Haunter, and we get the fan for later. That's really nice. And if this goes down, we even have Dark Patch. This is lovely. Right, tricky steps. I think this deck's good, right? It feels nice because... Oh, actually, that might be a good idea. Do I give that... Uh, No, I don't think it matters. 
Yeah, I don't think the moving the energy actually matters. Because I know it helps with the Sinister EX, but that's less likely um, than... Oh, no, maybe... No, maybe... Hmm. Actually, I don't know what I should be doing here. Relatively difficult, now that I think about it. I think I need to, like, just KO every Poltergeist that comes up to just prevent... Weird here. Oh, hello. That's interesting. Funny enough, I do have a response to it. Mm, kind of. I won't be one at KOing it, but um, I will be doing something at least, eh? But either way, the Gnawing Curse still is in play, so there is still damage being taken as they attach, which hopefully can soften them up to a point of one at KO with the... That's 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 reaching, isn't it, really? Mm, you need three more attachments to ha from hand in order to get it there, right? Yeah, two for 170 and then one more for 160. It's unlikely, let's be real. And there's another Poltergeist. This is just bad. Our deck's working, but this is just a bad matchup, bro. <laughs> Don't even just come up weird here and just cook us man. How much damage are you doing? 4, 8, 12, 16, 200, 240, 280? Oh my god, they're doing exactly 280? No shot, bro. Ha! Huh. That's not good, because that means they can just 280 the next turn. Good thing is I can tricky set the energy off, right? So, I mean, if they have energy switch, it's a wrap. But other than that, it's it's not looking great. Let's see if we can pull something off. There's an Arvin. And again, a butt catching set. Oh my god, they even get the vitality. Don't think it matters mathematically here, but, uh, you know, they've got it. <laughs> just the flex, I guess. But they will be doing the exact amount they need to take a one at KO. Damn, that's some good maths. Some really good maths. I plan on Iono-ing here. Iono and hope to get a Gengar? Doesn't... Oh, okay. I guess we'll just do both. There's the Dark Patch coming into play. Love that. Attach return. Go for a fan. And I'm on Iono first. And then if we need the Gengar, we get it, right? God, my nose has been so itchy, man. It's... Uh, I don't like heat, bro. I'm not made for it. Hello. Like the straight Gengar there. All right, that means I can quick search and get myself a Poffin, I think. Yeah, I think I Poffin for two Ghastly. I think that's the move. Let's do that. Then I retreat and I can move some energy off and just hope they don't get to 310. <laughs> they need to put two more energy on the weirdest so they can attach an energy switch. But other than that, nothing else. All right, let's just move it to the ninja. While well, they do go for ATL Dance, activating that Gnawing Curse again. Loki hoping you can get to a point of just like boss KOing this. You know, that'd be kind of cool. They do attach the weird ear. Gnawing Curse comes in there. Doesn't matter this time around though. Oh, they get the energy switch. No. Oh, that's so bad. That's hidden exactly enough. Oh God. <laughs> I do not feel good here. We're getting absolutely bodied. It's karma. It has to be karma. There's no other way to put it. Oh my Lord. All right, here's hoping that Iono can just get us there. You know what I mean? Um, Let's go for a rod here. And I'm getting Gengar, Gengar and energy. I, well, what else can I do? Do. And we have to, Iono, we have to bring their hand down to two here and just pray. Pray G and chat because it's getting a bit scary. Let's Iono. An energy would be so good and we get it. Okay, right. So I'm going to vessel away the switch. Yes. And then get two energy. Hatch one to Ghastly. I'm not going to throw the Rotom down. I'm just going to grasp and draw. If they have boss, it's GG, right? What more can you do? But I'm just hoping. I'm hoping there's a comeback. I'm hoping they've put too many eggs in one basket and that benefits us. That said though, they're going to have Sinister and Sinister is going to be able to use all that energy that's gone and just, just KO anything on the bench. Which means I need to get double Gengar out and remove... Oh, they go for the Prime. Oh my god! I've been absolutely demolished! Yep, they're even moving the energy of the Weirdo. I'll let him have the KO, it's fair. Weirdo has absolutely stole the show for them, and you can't hate. This is one of them ones where you just gotta rate the creativity, and uh, yeah, I like it, man, it's fun. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Gengar, and I think this is a very, very solid build of Gengar, if you ask me. Seems to always work, always find what it needs, um, there's honestly not much improvements I can suggest. It's just perfect, like me. No, but in all seriousness though, I guess you could cut that rescue board. The rescue board isn't that big a deal. And maybe you could throw in a second vessel, or even a second dark patch in case things get really dirty and really rough. But I think that's a very, very solid deck. And that fan is so strong, man. Unless you're playing Raging Bolt, Sinister, and Chen Pao, you're going to have a bad time in those cases. Other than that though, if your opponent does struggle with energy resources. Gengar is going to punish that and most likely get a win. But I think that's as far as it goes in the format. But nonetheless, for those Gengar enjoyers, there you go. Enjoy. And a huge thank you to the channel members for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member yourself, click the join button down below to see all the perks and all the tiers where you can get exclusive content and the like. But we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for the support, guys. See you later.